I've tried out several different gaming mice over the last year, but in the end, there was one mouse I couldn't stop going to, and that's Glorious's Model D Wireless. With its ergonomic shape, fantastic stock feet, and great bulk quality, it's been easy to recommend at its $80 price tag. Razer dropped their new V2 Pro mouse a couple months back, and it makes it a real contender to this guy. But is it really worth $70 more? Included with the Model D is the mouse itself, along with a USB receiver and an extender dongle. I do recommend using it because it'll ensure that you have the lowest possible latency, which is ideal when you're playing competitive PC games. As well, you'll get the USB-C cable used to charge or use the mouse wire. There are some extra PTFE fee included, but as I'll get into later, I don't think they're needed. With the Viper, you'll get the mouse also along with its USB receiver and extender dongle. For me, I haven't noticed a difference using it, but it does give that peace of mind that I'm having the most consistent connection possible. While the side grips that were found in the Viper Ultimate were removed here, they give you some additional ones that can be put on the mouse, but I found that the stock sides were actually far more comfortable to use during gameplay. The included braided cable is made of a nice lightweight material, so if you want to use it wired, it won't be getting in the way. Otherwise, though, it does make for a quick charge with its USB-C connection. The most apparent differences between the mice comes with their designs. I think the Viper looks much cleaner and I prefer it solely for aesthetics in my gaming setup. There's no lighting which makes for a clean white build with the black Razer logo and scroll wheel giving a subtle accent. The Model D has its all white design with the most notable difference being the honeycomb cutouts on the back of the shell and bottom of the mouse. This is done to cut down on the weight and while it has grown on me it looks much worse than the solid construction from Razer. But because your hand will be covering this area whenever you're actually using the mouse I don't think it's something you need to give much thought. The plastic of the Model D feels extremely solid and is comfortable to hold in the hand. The Vipers feels a little cheaper but I do find the grippy texture it has to be extremely comfortable for long gaming sessions. The shape is where the majority of the decision comes down to, and with the Model D, its ergonomic build is one that I've loved to use. The left side is raised higher up, creating a more comfortable spot to rest your thumb at the side. Using it with the fingertip grip has been fantastic and is a reason I keep going back to it. It is unfortunately though only a right-handed mouse, whereas the Viper does have the symmetrical shape that can be used comfortably in both your left and right hands. The Viper has a flatter shape, but like I mentioned, the grippy texture of the plastic makes it fit well in the hand, even though the old stock side grips were removed. Gaming with the fingertip grip here excels, and while it's not as ergonomic as the Model D, I have no issues using it for multiple hours at a time. Throwing it on the scale, it comes in at just 59 grams, a whole 10 grams lighter than the Model D, even with a tiny comb design. The difference is definitely noticeable, and when playing competitive games like Valorant or Siege, where reaction times are very important, I much prefer using the Viper. Though, I find that the heavier build of the Model D helps me to be slightly more precise, and is much better when I'm playing single player games, where having that slight edge doesn't affect the gameplay. Having that more ergonomic shape is a big plus for me if I'm trying to relax and get immersed into a story based title. The V2 Pro cut 15 grams from the Mercury Viper Ultimate, but that came with sacrificing some of the things that I felt made the Ultimate a much better option than the Model D and justified its price. Previously, there were four side buttons, but now it's just the two on the side. That said, I actually think that these ones on the V2 Pro are a massive upgrade. They protrude out the side, making them much easier to get at and have a great tactile feel to them. The ones found on the Model D are large and easy to press, but don't have quite as nice of a feel to them. The scroll wheel on the V2 Pro is unchanged from the Ultimate and is a huge con for me as it has a very rattly sound and inconsistent feel when scrolling. I've always liked the one found on the Model D as its rubber coating was very grippy and the scroll itself is extremely smooth. Right behind here is the DPI button, which is a lifesaver being on top as you don't need to lift the mouse in order to swap your sensitivity. On the V2 Pro, power and DPI are consolidated into a single button. This is instead of a separate power switch and DPI button that was found on the Viper. I find myself constantly switching the DPI instead of powering it off, which can be a hassle at times. You may notice that here at the bottom, the wireless charging coil is gone from the Viper, and this is something that I really miss, as throwing the ultimate on the dock whenever I wasn't playing was so convenient. But now we do at least have a USB-C port to charge instead of the old micro USB. Each mouse uses a 2.5 4 gigahertz USB dongle to connect to the PC, and I've had no connectivity issues with either. Both mice feel extremely responsive, and even though the Viper's hyperspeed sensor looks better on paper, having a 30,000 max DPI instead of Glorious's BAM sensor with a 19,000 max DPI, the difference is actually negligible. The Viper does feel smoother, but this is actually more to do with its great stock feet. Since I started using this mouse, this is the thing I noticed the most, as it glides so well across my mousepad. The Model D though still has very good stock feet, 
and I found it to be better than most other mice I've tried. While some people will swear by third party options, I really don't think it's necessary to upgrade the skates on either. For switches, I think Razer takes the cake by a long mile. Pressing on them, they have a very tactile feel that makes for a very satisfying click. Pairing that with the grippy texture that's on the mouse button, it makes using the Viper in game so good. With the Model D, the smooth plastic on the mouse buttons doesn't feel as good, but the click is very smooth. I still much prefer the feel to the Vipers, but I love the level of consistency it has to the clicks. The battery life on both of these mice is really impressive, but with the V2 Pro getting rid of lighting entirely, it's lasted significantly longer than the Model D with a static lighting effect at 50% brightness. I thought that the charging dock the Viper Ultimate had mitigated battery issues when lighting was on for me, as I never played long enough that the mouse would die completely. Every time I went to grab it, there would be a full charge, and that's something I really miss. It is a little more tedious now that with both you need to go and grab a cable, but if you are using the extender dongle, it's actually pretty easy to just unplug the cable from it and instead connect it straight to the mouse. The Model D has three lighting zones, one on both the left and right side, as well as under the scroll wheel, but because your hand covers it the majority of the time, it actually may be worth turning off lighting completely just to extend the overall battery life. The Viper is rated for 70 hours of battery life and the Model D 71, though at an 1000 hertz pulling rate, I end up charging each about once a month depending on how much I'm gaming. You can configure the pulling rate along with all of your GPS stages for the Viper within Synapse, and similarly for the Model D, it uses Glory Score where you can additionally configure the lighting effects. You can pick up the Model D wireless for $80 or the Viper V2 Pro for $150. I still think the Viper is a bit overpriced as it doesn't have quite as many features as the Ultimate did at that same price. Though ignoring price completely, I do think it's the better option for competitive players as it's 10 grams lighter and has more tactile switches. I find it to be more comfortable when playing multiplayer games and better for reacting quickly, though I tend to prefer the more ergonomic shape the Model T has when I'm playing single player games. Both mice are fantastic options and I truly think the decision for the most part can be brought down to which shape you prefer. You won't notice the differences in sensors and while you can't tell the V2 Pro is lighter, if you're shit with the Model D, you're not going to magically get better just shutting off some of its weight. It's not the best design out there, but it definitely has grown on me, and at $80, I think it's a very competitive option to what Razer's offering. I really hope that sharing my experiences has been able to help some of you decide which mouse you're going to buy next, but if you still have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. With that, I've been Cole, and I appreciate you all for watching. I'll catch you in the next one, but for now, take care.